Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for your support. Today I'm gonna to be talking in, about and doing a reassessment of Roxy Music's sixth studio album, Manifesto. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to say thank you to the three supporters who have contributed to the fundraiser listed below. It's called Buy Me A Coffee. Um, I'm trying to raise funds to buy a editing laptop for the channel. It's um, necessary because my editor is moving on to other things and my my laptop does not handle 4k video which is necessary to create this content so if you if you like what i do and you want to support it in, a, in some way this is a great way to do it just go to the link below and you can contribute whatever you like so thank you so much for doing that um so roxy music manifesto is a sixth studio album from roxy music it came out after a hiatus i think of two or three years and it was so different that it really kind of put off the critics and longtime fans. To me, I came in with this album. Um, this was my first Roxy Music album. Subsequently got Flesh and Blood and Avalon. And I started looking back through the career, through the greatest hits album that was around at the time. Um, it's the one with the gold record on it. And it had all the strongest cuts from the earlier albums, which I do love. Um, I've subsequently picked up some of those earlier albums, but um, to me, they have strong cuts throughout, but are uneven. This one, this one is a different direction for them. There's a couple things going on. There's, they've upped the production values. So this one, Flesh and Blood and Avalon, are um, produced by Rhett Davis, or engineered by Rhett Davis. And... He has a very sophisticated way of putting together the sound of the album. And it's a polished, contemporary sound. Brian Ferry has also chosen to go in a direction of dance music. So there, there is a dance beat throughout most of this album. It's not a disco album. It's a rock album. But there is um, definitely danceable beat throughout the album. So that's very different from the earlier Roxy music, maybe with the exception of uh, Love is the Drug, which was kind of a dance kind of groove. Um, and Brian Ferry's singing has changed too, and in a good way, in my opinion. Um, Brian Ferry's singing on the earlier albums is that quirky, all over the place, different different styles, different, different ways of... Uh, saying the lyrics it's it's a little eccentric and here he's turned into um a polished beautiful crooner kind of and i love it i love it and i love this and i love the two that follow and the pinnacle of course is the last one avalon but this one should not be overlooked it's really really good it has great stuff on it is strong all the way through and I think it's unfair to say that it's their weakest album it's definitely not um, this is the new Abbey Road half speed master that came out in 2022 very well done by Miles Shoal it's cut um, well it's it is a digital cut but it's taken directly from the half speed master tape and then mastered from the digital file um, it is very well packaged the whole series is they've revised the artwork um they have glossy covers now the color's been corrected it's um a gorgeous package they have the abbey road black inner sleeve that is uh, polyline uh, the original custom labels and also uh, each one has cardstock inner sleeve that is uh, lyric sheets so very very well done I love it they're gorgeous and so as far as the music um, this record is design the um, sorry is separated into east side and west side instead of side a and side B um, east side is up tempo for the most part it starts out with manifesto and manifesto 
kind of sets the tone for the album. It starts with a very ominous uh, opening with synth and then this very strong beat comes in. Uh, it's a slow beat, actually. It's not up tempo. It's a slow beat, but it's a slow, persistent beat. And Brian Ferry weaves his his lyrics throughout this uh, beat, and it's called Manifesto. Uh, very interesting cut. I love it. I love the way it ends in this kind of uh, spacey ending um, that goes right into the next cut, which is Trash. Uh, Trash was a single in the UK. It wasn't here in the United States, but um, Trash is an up-tempo rocker and it's very, very good as well. Lots of tasty guitar from Phil Manzanera and uh, uh, some eccentric touches that lead back, harken back to the earlier days. Angel Eyes, very strong. You probably know the cut um, from MTV or, you know, the videos that were out. Um, there's two versions. One, there's actually, I think, three versions. One is the album version. So this is rockier, but still a dance groove. And this is my preferred version. I sin since I've heard um, the disco versions, and I don't like them. I, I don't care for them. This is the one that you want to have. Um, beautiful singing from Brian Ferry. Very creative song. Um, it's rocky, it's got great guitar, it's got great drumming, it's got... The whole album has excellent musicianship throughout, with great production, and you hear everything clearly. It's a great sound, you know, artificial sound stage and beautiful. Um, the last two cuts, Still Falls the Rain. Still Falls the Rain has very interesting vocal again from Brian Ferry. Um, stronger through the years as well. But the magic to me is on side two, which is called East Side, uh, West Side, sorry. West Side is, the songs have a bit more space and there's a lot of space for Andy McKay to do uh, sax, uh, solos, and just the space is very compelling, especially on a hi-fi system, it's beautiful. It starts with Ain't That So, and Ain't That So is, a mix of a, a, a slow and busy uh, beat. It, it, it weaves between both. And there's great, great background vocals that are very clear and arrayed in space. It's very fun and interesting song. Just gorgeous. And beautiful, beautiful vocal from Brian Ferry. Uh, My Little Girl same thing another pop confection but it's just it's just gorgeous the way it's constructed it sounds fantastic um great background vocals again just blew me away dance away blew me away again and i know it very well that was a hit here um just fantastic Cry, Cry, Cry was probably the re least favorite of mine on the album, but it's not a throwaway track. It's still great. It's just in a different, a little bit different style. Um, but really, what really got me on this album is the last cut. The last cut had me just in like goosebumps everywhere, like for the whole whole song, just waves of pleasure coming through me. It's called Spin Me Round. And Spin Me Round is the slowest cut on the album. It's a ballad. And it points the way towards Avalon. In fact, it could be on Avalon easily. It's a slow song. Um, and it's got Brian's best vocal on the album. Really clear. You can hear it. There's plenty of space around. It starts out, it's, it's a brilliant construction, the, this, this song. It starts out with what sounds like a ballerina music box turning around. An old fashioned ballerina music box. Ding, 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 ding. And you hear that music box music and it kind of goes into the song, which is about being on a dance floor and in a ballroom at the end of the night 
and everyone's gone. Everyone's all your friends have gone. You're just there by yourself. And it's called Spin Me Round. And it's like, it's brilliant, brilliant, and so moving with one of the most heartfelt vocals I've ever heard from Brian Ferry. And it's just sad and poignant and it's it'll blow you away. The sound is fantastic too. Um, it ends with the music box slowly winding down and running out of steam. Do, 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 do. Brilliant, brilliant. A great closer, like most of the later albums all have a great closer on them and this is this is one of the best. Um, to me, that, that song is worth the price of the album. I was so thrilled with it. But I've played the album a couple times since then. It sounds amazing on my system. It's kind of restored my faith in vinyl. And, it's, and it kind of surprised me because it's not analog, it's digital. And it, it's a great clean pressing too. Like I didn't have to worry about any ticks or pops. It's just, just music, just music, well constructed, well engineered and beautifully presented. I can't recommend it highly enough. I, if you like Avalon and you haven't heard some of these earlier two albums, this one is worth picking up for sure. I have links below for all the Roxy Music Has Speed Remasters because I'm a big fan of them. And I recommend them all. I've heard four of them so far. I have no doubt that the other ones are good too. Um, but definitely Avalon and Manifesto are high on my list. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.